Welcome to Side Stitches, where Joe and I decide that we're just going to let her hair down a little bit and pretty much keep recording after we're done with the main show. So essentially, it's the show after the show for those of you that decide to stick around. But ultimately, there's a couple things that we couldn't add directly into our conversation about Back to the Future because, well, we wanted to focus mainly on how Dr. M. Brown is a time monster, but there are some fun behind the scenes things that I thought might be worth spending a little more time with. Yeah, not everything's all gloom and doom in this in this fast paced 80s fun movie that was edited uh, that was that we were given. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about let's talk about some more uh, more fun things from Back to the Future. Well, Joe, obviously, we're not celebrities, right? We um, are not. No, and this is also why um, normally uh, after shows are hosted by celebrities. So it's good <laughs> that you pointed out that we're not them. <laughs> well, we're not them, but there are some things that I, I think are going to provide us some real real world context. OK, um, as far as the actor Tom Wilson, who plays Biff Tannen uh, in Back to the Future, goes through you know, pretty much on on a daily basis for him. But mm-hmm. If you remember our last side stitches involved talking about you know us being Ghostbusters and walking around in the real world and interacting with folks, right? Yes, we did do that. Well, you remember what one of the most annoying things was about doing that? Um, pointing and saying, "Who are you going to call?" <laughs> yes, <laughs> and and also people like yelling at us saying, "You know, who are you going to call?" And we're like, "We wouldn't call uh, ourselves. No, we would call us, right?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, actor Tom Wilson pretty much goes through the same problem because he's Biff Tannen. He's one of the most recognizable bullies in all of cinema, right? Yeah, easily. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's like him and then like I don't know, Circe is like above above him on that one. But Ooh, yeah. 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 The only difference is though is that no one's really talking about Game of Thrones anymore. And you and I are talking about Back to the Future. Yeah, we're still doing that. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but <laughs> As it pertains to Tom Wilson, though, it, so you and I obviously couldn't stand being, you know, essentially catcalled by people all the time mm-hmm. for, you know, the same questions. And, and everyone's always kind of, you know, hitting us up on that. But Tom Wilson gets that infinitely worse than we do because, you know, people want to run up to him and ask him or questions about the movie. And, you know, hey, can I put you in a headlock so that my friends can see that I beat up a bully too and all that kind oh, of stuff? God. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh, that would be horrible. It's one. It's one thing to be like, um, ask like to have a picture and I like, and go and, and do like a, a line from a movie, but another like, can I physically touch you and make it look like I'm beating you up? Like, nah, you know, you know what? I, how about you just don't talk to me, let alone do that. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be touched <laughs> no 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 <laughs> well that that's ultimately what happened to him and i'm not sure if you remember um talking about some of this with you know other fans at the time but do you remember hearing about his his uh business card that he would hand out to people no no i didn't know he did that what do you do so he he actually uh hands this business card out to people that kind of has like frequently asked questions of Tom Wilson and Biff Tannen <laughs> and Back to the Future. And so when people approach Tom Wilson, he's kind of armed with these business cards and he hands them out to people because it's like, I'm going to cut through the 10 minutes of banter <laughs> that, that everybody brings to me. <laughs> and so, so this is just life that he lives. But one, one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this was when, when you and I were, you know, in our, in our cosplay careers or costume careers. I don't know. I yeah, whatever you want to call it. it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, well, people would talk about Tom Wilson and you know, this, this business card thing had, had come up several times. And so uh, people started to give Tom Wilson this, this persona that he didn't like his fans and that he hated back to the future. And it actually couldn't be any further from the truth. Mm-hmm. Like he actually, he loves his fans. Uh, he, he actually adores them for the fact that, in that role made him famous and that the fans have continued to keep him relevant. And so, mm-hmm. so if, if anybody gets any value from this conversation today, at least they'll know that Tom Wilson doesn't truly hate his fans. <laughs> um, but he's actually a com- like a comedian. Like mm-hmm. he really, he, yeah. Yeah. Huh. His, his post back to the future career involved uh, being a comedian. And he actually also created a song that he sings specifically about like these frequently asked questions of back to the future. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and he's also referenced it. He's got a, a podcast as well that he's been hosting for a while. Um, it's also on YouTube as well. Similar to us, if you haven't had a chance to kick on over to that channel. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, yeah. He, so he's, mm-hmm. I mean, from everything I've watched on him, you know, you, you see, uh, I'm, I'm going to blank on the guy's name, but one of the extras from Ghostbusters that um, was one of the two actors with the cue cards in the beginning, you know, or the, the tarot cards or the, you know, whatever you want to call yeah, it. Yeah, eh, not tarot, like that. They have big fortune telling cards, I guess, is the, is the best way to do it. Um, yeah, just yeah. they have like that, you know, the squiggly lines, uh, the dots, the circles, squares, the star, all that stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, well, the, the guy that plays that, that actor, like, he, like uh, everything I've seen him <laughs> in uh, post Ghostbusters, like as far as interviews and stuff, like, mm-hmm. you, you can clearly tell this, like, this is what he's got going. Like, this is. <laughs> Yeah, this is his Alamo. And so he mm-hmm. like he's actually kind of uh not well adjusted for someone who pretty much only spent about three and a half minutes in a movie. Um Tom Wilson is the complete opposite end of that spectrum. I mean, uh he's totally completely well adjusted. Um, and some of these rumors about him not being like a, a big fan friendly person, mm-hmm. um, I, I just don't know where those things start because even if you were given the the card by him. Uh, he, he makes it pretty clear that it's a, you know it's it's comedic it's an act it's it's meant to be funny you mm-hmm. know so um so I, either way I, I just wanted to give kudos to to tom wilson because you know it's 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 easy to hate actors because mm-hmm. people can't separate what they see from who the actual person is right Happens yeah all the time. Mm-hmm. yeah no and um personally i mean if i was given a basically biff tannen's business card i think that'd be great like in and of itself <laughs> like hey, i might have been <laughs> i've got this this fantastic business card as a memento um which really i mean it should be good enough um i always wonder that like with um when it comes to like meeting celebrities like um there definitely should be a line and understanding that they're human beings so if they're like you know buying groceries getting something to eat like that's probably not a great time to just go and interrupt them, interrupt their day and see what they're doing. Like they, they, they go to conventions and they go to, um, you know, like organize like settings for a reason. And that's, that's the capacity where it's like, okay to come out, like go up and talk to them. Um, whereas being on the street, like, I don't know, like imagine if it was you like on the street, just doing your own thing. And some crazy person comes shouting at you, wanting a picture with you, you would probably want them to get their head examined. Granted, like, you know, you also, you're not a celebrity, so it is slightly different, but it's the same thing. Your day is being intruded on. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, just, would you, if you see Biff Tannen in the street, let's not scream at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. be happy he's giving you his business card um, as opposed to, like, you know, calling the police or beating you up, which he wouldn't do because he's a really nice guy. Yeah, dude, it, he's a really nice guy. And I actually... Um... I've, I've looked into his, you know, his, uh, post back to the future career. And there's a couple of funny things about him that, um, I didn't know if you remembered, but he actually voiced, uh, Tony Zuko in Batman, the animated series. Oh, cool. No, I didn't know that. Yeah. The gangster that literally kills Dick Grayson's parents. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that's Biff Perfect. Tannen. <laughs> um, and and oddly enough, you and I just talked about Wing Commander three recently. If you remember, mm-hmm. oh, it was, uh, Wing Commander four. Oh well, well okay, yeah. so we talked about Wing Commander. Not to be confused with Wing Commander three, four, five, six, and however many of those movies there are. Yeah, Wing Commander three, Heart of the Tiger. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so that's that actually had Mark Hamill in it. Yeah, and it actually had Tom Wilson as well. Mm-hmm. So so Biff Tannen uh, would manage to you know find a Star Wars connection there. Um, so I, I I just always was kind of mesmerized by his his career, um, you know, post Back to the Future because it, it took some weird turns. And I remember mm-hmm. hearing about this at conventions that he was just like a prick and he was uh, very mean to people. And I'm like, mm-hmm. you know what? The guy guest starred on Lois and Clark. Okay, how could he really be <laughs> that bad of a I'd guy? Be that bad of a person? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and like another another one, right? I always wonder. Um, what his public perception is too is Crispin Glover. Um, in Crispin Glover, he plays Marty McFly's dad. Um, in only in the first movie, um, he yep. did, he didn't come back for any of the sequel films. Uh, and he he does conventions, he does go around, but if you go there, he won't sign anything Back to the Future. He doesn't like talking about Back to the Future, and he doesn't go into 
really his time on that set of that movie or his experience with it. Um, and this is another case where I think you misconstrued as um, Crispin Glover, like doesn't, didn't like the movie or he doesn't appreciate his fans. And those are also two things that are completely further from the truth um, is he is very appreciative of his fans. He will sign basically literally anything people give him except for back to the future stuff. Uh, do you remember why he won't do like, basically he's, he's kind of publicly written off back to the future. Well, yeah, I, I have heard a little bit about this, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm wondering if you and I both know it for the same reason. So um, more than happy to hear, I guess, what you've uncovered. Yeah. So um, I got this from listening to uh, actually Michael Rosenbaum's podcast. Uh, if you're not familiar with Michael Rosenbaum, he was uh, Lex Luthor um, on Smallville. And he has his own podcast called Inside of You. Not affiliated with us, but a great podcast. Um he had Crispin Glover on and they talked about uh, basically it was, it was legal reasons as to why he won't really talk about or sign anything back to the future anymore. And so when you watch back to the future too, you'll notice you do see Marty McFly's dad um, in the future as the old man in the upside down gravity chair. It's not really a wheelchair. It's just mm-hmm. kind of like moving around the ceiling, which makes you wonder like, how does he get around outside by the way? Cause he doesn't just, he just keep going up and he comes back down. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, no, no one's asking questions in the McFly family. <laughs> <laughs> no one does. He just comes in on the ceiling and that's all we don't yep. question. Like maybe grandpa's just outside on like an awning the whole time. And he just yep. comes in on occasion. But anyway, um, you'll see uh, someone who looks like an aged Crispin Glover and even sounds like Crispin Glover, but it is someone who is not Crispin Glover. It's um, not. It's not. Not, not at all. And that's that's where the issue comes in is basically um, because they used uh, prosthetics, I believe, on Crispin Glover to make himself the middle aged married version of Martin McFly's dad. Uh, since they had moldings of his face, they used those same moldings to make an even older version of Marty's dad to be used in the future. Um, and had someone who just a really good job impersonating Crispin Glover's voice basically put on an old man um mcfly mask do his best older uh, mcfly uh uh impression and do his part in the movie and of course like you'd say oh well no harm no foul right well wrong um when you're a celebrity um your likeness is your business uh, and it's the same with uh musicians uh and actors um your voice your face uh your presence is um is how you get how you make your livelihood so if you're especially in like i believe it's the uh, the screen actors guild uh, i think is what glover was a part of um they're like no no that's completely like illegal like they need your permission to use your likeness for the rest of this franchise if you're not in it they can recast you but they can't make the person look and sound like you without your permission and because of that there was a very a very large legal battle between, I believe, Robert Zemeckis and and Crispin Glover um, that ended in Crispin Glover's favor. And I don't think they're on speaking terms. I, correct me if I, I could be wrong on that. Um, but I do know it was not it was not a pretty process. And because of the, the legal process, that's why Crispin Glover just won't associate himself publicly with Back to the Future anymore. Again, not, not that he's unappreciative of his fans. Uh, when he refuses to sign back to the future things um, or he doesn't like talking about um, if he doesn't talk about his time on the, on the movie anymore, it's, it's just because of that and and nothing else. Yeah. I mean, they, they literally did like a bait and switch where they replaced him with actor Jeffrey Weissman, Mm -hmm. who you mentioned is wearing the prosthetics and uh, doing his best, you know, impression of him. And then they spliced in, you know, footage from back to the future one into two. So it almost feels like, you know, Crispin Glover is there, but, uh, but yeah, he absolutely isn't. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, that rift was, was pretty, pretty big. I mean, um, I, they settled out of court. I'm pretty sure, mm-hmm. uh, obviously Crispin Glover probably got compensated in some way and yeah, I mean, pretty ugly situation. I, I totally agree with that. Um, and what's really interesting about him too, is that, you know, he's obviously a very quirky, very strange person, you know, outside mm-hmm. of the uh, outside of Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Um, and part of the reasons, too, for why he actually had some issues with Back to the Future um, actually was disclosed by Leah Thompson, who played um, 
you know, who played Lorraine Baines McFly, right? Mm -hmm. um, Marty's mother and his wife, uh, Crispin Glover's, you know, in in movie wife. Mm -hmm. um, she actually mentioned that he had a major problem with the end of the movie because you know he thought, well, we're we're better off now because we're richer and we we play tennis, and <laughs> and so for him it was like people are getting a really bad message from this movie that because we have more money and because we're you know we're higher standing all of a sudden we're just better off as people mm -hmm. so he had more of a, a philosophical issue you know with with the way the movie ended um which could you know add further fuel to the fire to that whole scenario mm -hmm. um now, it, what's really funny about Crispin Glover, though, this this Leah Thompson interview uh, where she talked about, you know, some of the things that happened in this movie <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to, to let you know how strange mm -hmm. Crispin Glover is. OK, um, so just for that scene in the movie at the end where they come in and they're older, you know, they're they're their better selves right after mm -hmm. the after the uh, you know, the events of the new 1955 and then the, the new timeline. So. Crispin Glover actually invited Leah Thompson over to his, his house or apartment at the time uh, to, to plan for the, the scene and to get into the, the right frame of mind. Mm -hmm. so, so Leah Thompson describes his house as literally all black. The entire like place was black. The floors Whoa. were black, the furniture, the walls, uh, everything that furnished this place was completely black. Everything. Huh. So she walks into this place and she's like, you know, I, I can't say I've ever seen a home that was completely furnished in just black things. <laughs> I mean, if you if you tore the drywall down and looked at the studs and like the insulation, probably all black is all black, all the way yeah. down. <laughs> all the way. Yeah. And 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 the funny thing was, you know, she um she said that he was obviously kind of odd to begin with, mm -hmm. but what he wanted her to come there to do was for them to paint a volcano together to prepare for the scene. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that again. He wanted them to paint a volcano together to prepare for this altered timeline sequence. I mean, as someone who's watched the movie a few times, I'm struggling to remember when, when George and Lorraine have anything to do with a volcano in this movie <laughs> yeah seriously like hey come on over to my you know black lacquered floor ceilings and and everything right and let's paint mm -hmm. a volcano together because that's part of my process <laughs> 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 but okay Le leah thompson goes on to say that is exactly what we did um and then she said that she thought it was the most awesome preparation to play a character ever all right. Yeah. She said, honestly, this is, I'm, I'm going to quote her directly. She says, if we had to paint a volcano to get there, and she's talking about this performance, mm -hmm. I would do it again in a heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're, if you're a struggling actor or mm -hmm. if you're just trying to plan a first date, like paint everything, paint, <laughs> paint everything black, paint your entire apartment black <laughs> yep. yep, from, from, from ceiling to floor. And then, <laughs> and then paint yourself a volcano. Okay. All right. That's interesting. Um, <laughs> never knew that. Um, although I have to say like one thing that's been on my mind with Leah Thompson for years now, um, if I could ask her anything, it would be. So before you took the role for Howard, the duck, did you read the whole script, like the whole thing? Yeah. Did you know what because, you're going to be doing with a duck humanoid thing? Yeah. The uh, you don't see anything, but there is some heavy, heavily, heavily, heavily implied human humanoid duck relations in that movie, where you just have to imagine how uncomfortable could that have been for everyone, especially Leah Thompson <laughs> in that whole thing. Um, and I just think like this is after she had back to the future. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Like she had back to the future before. It's like, you could have turned this down, let alone at least said, uh, hopefully she could be said like, Hey, could we rewrite this? This is weird. Like, I don't think this should work. Um, you know, someone probably just said it's going to mm -hmm. be tastefully done. So <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's not worry a whole lot about oh what the content's going to be. Right. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, we can we can save just the bizarreness that is Howard the Duck for possibly another episode. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because that that deserves its whole whole other, you know, just bag of cats that is Howard the Duck. <laughs> well, <laughs> I think what's really interesting about these actors and actresses mm-hmm. here is is that you know we we come into these movies after we've watched them for so long and we just assume certain things about them because you know, we've, we've come to adore them for their portrayals. And sometimes we just assume too much. And, you know, for the, the case of Tom Wilson, um, for people who have never run into him before, know nothing about him. They just hear about this crazy business card out there. Like, mm-hmm. okay, well, <laughs> you, you know, you might think he's a, an asshole because of it, but he, he really isn't. Um, and the same thing goes for Crispin Glover. Like you mm-hmm. mentioned, uh, Crispin Glover is one of the, the first people to recognize that people think he's eccentric. And so he just kind of buys into it and goes, well, I'm interested by things that are unusual. That's, that's who I am as a person. And so naturally that's just kind of what he, he gravitates towards. Right. Yeah. Makes um, sense to me. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I have obviously never met Crispin Glover, but if Leah Thompson, who is, you know, literally his coworker, is totally fine with this, mm-hmm. right? Like if he's <laughs> if she's fine with, with with painting a volcano with this guy, mm-hmm. then then I would think um that maybe we shouldn't pull as much meaning from some of these stories we've heard mm-hmm. about, like the the court case with you know with the creators of of you know of the series and and all that stuff. Like I I just wanted to get that out there because um, if you hear it in passing, you may not actually research it, except it is fact. And next thing you know, you get rumors. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So either way, I thought it would be fun because, um, you know, this is really a totally different thread than what our back to the future episode just went through. <laughs> so, <laughs> so just a little bit different. We talked about bit, monsters, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, now we're talking about humans who are just good people. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so definitely give them a shot if you ever, you know, come across anything else with them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I got, Joe. I don't know about you. No, that worked. I, I, I think that's it. Um, so yeah, don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a review, all that fun stuff. Um, wherever you found us, tell friends and uh, we'll, we'll see you in a few days with a full episode.